So in this session, we are going to discuss about the ADTs, ABAP development tools. This is basically what we have look and feel. Anyways, we are going to do it directly on the studio, right? Okay. Look and feel. When we log in into the HANA studio, uh, we'll have different perspectives. These perspectives uh, we have seen on uh, when we go to the HANA studio and we go to the perspectives, we get the different types of perspectives, which we'll do it here. Like most uh, Eclipse based uh, this thing. so. Eclipse is uh, the GUI graphical user interface that we that SAP has done and here we'll have different perspectives when we go to the windows open perspective HANA modeler and then we have uh, you know HANA modeler is where we all that we'll do the development in the HANA studio but if you have if at all if you have to go for ABAP we have to go for ABAP perspective which we already have discussed and we are going to do that in regular basis okay so here we'll have this is the HANA studio view this is a HANA studio view, not the HANA ABAP perspective. HANA ABAP perspective, uh, the, the drop down catalogs and all will be different. If you see these things, if you see catalog content provisioning security, these all are related to HANA, um, uh, you know, uh, HANA studio. Now, here we'll have system and uh, last, uh, I mean, like pre when we discussed about the HANA uh, classes, I actually told you that, you know, uh, if you remember, I told you that, you know, you, if you have to create a schema, you have to go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, create it using a SQL statement, but no other way. And then we have tables. We also created a couple of tables, uh, you know, by default, getting uh, uh, tables getting created automatically with the field names and all. Uh, we have the, you know, file. And then we discussed about you know creating a table, a table you know manually, and then you know through navigation we just write and give the properties and then upload the data. And the third one would be uh, using the open SQL uh, you know open SQL command. Open SQL command we didn't discuss at that time because I, I you know it, we rarely use that because we already have the navigation part. But we should also know that it's good to know that because from the technical perspective it's good to know that. And uh, when we have these tables, uh, once we have the tables, we go go ahead with okay. So here, when we log in into the you know perspective and we when we go to the systems, initially to get get to that level, first we have to log in into some system and we have to give the credentials in the in the logon pad, which we will discuss. Okay, so this is how you actually have to write the code to get the table created. So this is one way of doing creation of table. If you, if you, if at all, if you remember in the previous sessions, what I did is I have done, I've created a table using a, you know, automated process. We just drag and drop, and then you, you actually create that. See, and um, and the second one is that you, you just uh, write the field names, and then you know through navigation you create it. But now the third, third when we, third method is like you know you have to create it by using the SQL commands. I have the we have this content packages so in the content we'll have the package we had to create a package and then we need to go ahead with the we need to go ahead with the views so we'll have three types of views here one is attribute views another calculation views and then we have the analytical views which is the first one and then we also have, can create procedures here this procedures which we create in the hana studio uh, needs to be you know uh, transferred to our abap abap so we need to uh, access these things into the abap program okay Let us be very clear that whenever we talk about HANA ABAP, you you cannot directly only focus on uh, only focus on the ABAP perspective. We need to know HANA Studio as well. It's mandatory. HA hundred is a standard book which SAP recommends you to be perfect in uh, before starting the HA four hundred. Now, what does HA hundred mean? Basics of HANA. Then we need to focus on HF400, which is actually ABAP on HANA. Okay. 
Okay, so here we have no. we have this basics of HANA. We need to have we need to know the basics of HANA. In the basics of HANA only, all those things come. You know, creation of tables, DB tables. Second one is creation of views. Third one is creation of procedures. Under this, there are a lot of uh, you know, subtitles that we have. That subtitles also will be creating. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, there are a lot of things. Uh, you know, these are the basic things actually. In in Hana, ha ABAP on Hana, we are going to do that. Uh, you know, uh, the coding and all these things and accessing these things. How to access all these things into the Hana ABAP into the ABAP perspective is what we need to discuss in the Hana Hana HA four hundred. Okay, so when we talk about HANA Studio, remember that this is something which not just ABAPers will know, everyone who is working on HANA platform must be knowing it, whether it might be administration guys, functional guys, or HANA developers, or anyone. So we need to do that. And uh, now ABAP and SAP HANA. Is the most important concept that we need to understand when we when sap had started hana database primarily in 2012 at the time abap could have accessed sap hana side by side scenarios with the application server abap 7.x so that was introduced and then we have abap can run on sap hana sap netweaver bw and sap hana this was in the this was later uh, you know in um, service pack 05 so the, when we when they introduced hana database we, the step one was in 2012 the step two was somewhere around 2014 15 when we when they introduced this uh, service pack 05 wherein they they enabled abap abap to access all the sap hana development uh, hana uh, you know uh, uh, objects like uh, views and uh, you know tables then optimize ABAP on SAP HANA primary database for application server ABAP. So this is service pack 606. So we need to understand what are the additions that we have done. And we need to primarily understand the basic differences between uh, normal ABAP and HANA ABAP. Because this is also a mandatory question. So now if, if at all if we are using HANA database, we need to understand from the ABAPers perspective what is so special or what is the advantage that we have as an ABAPer. That is what we need to understand from the from our perspective. So the new capabilities of HANA offer a huge variety of opportunities. For example, like we, we can accelerate. What do we mean by accelerate is when we act when we try to access a data from a table, when we try to access a data from a table, the time taken from the for getting the data is considerably very enhanced like you know into previously if it used to take one hour now it will take one second so then extend okay that is something which we need to remember when we are uh, doing the coding and reach more users turn turn background job into interactive applications so all these days we used to run background jobs okay now why is why we used to write background jobs because it will not so that the system performance will not be affected so that the system performance will not be affected but now since hana database is the fastest system and we don't worry about the performance we have focused on running everything on ground uh, foreground okay so then we have this uh, turn all the background jobs will become interactive application so that you you click it you don't have to wait for hours together it immediately responds to you back and then we have innovation so new process and applications there are many processes that are been added in from the hana perspective and we also have a lot of applications which will be introduced for example like fury is there fury is an application which has been launched and then we have the eclipse which has been launched Eclipse, Fury, these all front-end tools we don't we didn't have in the previous version. So these are all the innovative uh, objects that we have, and uh, we also have uh, parallel processing is an innovative uh, uh, application, innovative process. And then we have row storage and column storage is an innovative uh, innovative process. So there are a lot of innovative process which are been inculcated into the SAP system 
uh, which we need to understand. Yesterday, when I logged in into the SAP system, I have shown you clearly that when we are creating a database table, it will have an ex additional option in the technical settings where you have to go and select whether it has to be a row storage table or a column storage table. So that is actually an application which has recently been introduced in the HANA perspective only. So previously, before HANA was introduced, that option of row storage and column storage definitely was not there. So innovation. So we are focusing on accelerate, extend and innovate. These are three, three, three areas where we need to understand more in detail from the ABAP perspective. What exactly this accelerate will do? So, by promising the coding of long-running background jobs for SAP HANA, the runtime for these jobs can be reduced. So, more jobs can be executed in the same time, and and uh, particularly cost uh, costly tasks are possible in, in one go rather than splitting them up. So, previously, when we had to load the data uh, from into BW or something like that, we used to split them as uh, in jobs. For example, in even in the BDC batch data conversion sessions also even in lsmw also we, we used to split the data into small small packets of data so that like you know the performance will not be affected so but here we don't have to worry about the splitting and all that you can upload the data no matter how big the file is it easily uploads into the system extend in the past some reporters uh, had to be executed in uh, reports have to be executed in the background simply because their runtime was too long for dialogue processes then what we have consequently users uh, worked on uh, snapshots or pre-aggregates uh, data sets but here you don't have to do that you don't have to uh, you know uh, do the background jobs that you can run directly innovative now the analysis and capability and, and analysis and calculation capabilities ABAP developer, developers can design new applications that would not have been possible in the past ABAP development guidelines. Now, what are the development guidelines? There are four pillars. These are the four pillars for the ABAP development in HANA. First is we need to understand about the improved tools for performance analysis. What are the improved tools for performance analysis is what we need to understand. That will be covering covered in the second chapter. Okay. So improved tools for the performance analysis. Next is extensions of ABAP language. Extensions of ABAP language. Third one is creating and consuming SAP HANA content with ABAP. So we can, uh, how to access the SAP HANA content using ABAP is what we need to understand. Then we have reuse components optimized for SAP HANA. Reuse components optimized for SAP HANA. So how to use components which are already been designed by SAP, which are specifically for HANA development, uh, ABAP development in HANA. You need to understand that. These are the things that we have and transport optimizations also. Transport optimization also uh, we, we have that also we need to discuss. And these are all like, you know, from the SAP NetWeaver uh, AS ABAP 7.4 perspective. So there are details of this. Uh, we'll, we'll see what are the differences that we have in detail about uh, these four pillars. First one is improved tools for performance. Second, extension of uh, ABAP language. Third one is creating and consuming SAP HANA content with ABAP. Fourth one is ABAP uh, reuse uh, components optimized for uh, SAP HANA. Now, HANA ABAP dictionary extensions. Now, what are the what are the options, additions that have been made for a database table is in the technical settings, we have database specific properties. So database specific properties we can select in the uh, select uh, other than the technical settings and we have uh, Default and SAP HANA is column store, but you can also select it as row store as well, if you tell if you want to do that. So this is completely the HANA ABAP coding is completely a new perspective wherein we are actually focusing on, uh, you know, more of the future approach than the, you know, classical approach. So we are slowly reducing the classical approach and, uh, you know, building the new approach here. So if you see this classical approach is gradually decreasing and the uh, future approach is gradually increasing then we have the application layer and database layer here move calculations to database only tra only transfer results now here if you see what are the possible approaches with the you know abap um you know 
when compared to the 7.4 service pack 02 if if it is less than service pack 7.4 uh, 7.4 uh, sp service pack 02 uh, then this thing will be applicable here sap hana is there applica as uh, bap is there wherein we have we are consuming uh, native sqls we are consuming uh, consume using uh, native sqls we, we can consume this sap hana views and store procedures into the abap this is what we were discussing right to how to consume this uh, hana hana applications into the abap then we have the delivery unit as well this is a bottom up approach with proxy objects so this is a bottom up approach wherein we can, we actually are uh, getting this uh, you know data to be accessed from the abap perspective that is from into the external views or into the database procedures uh, are into the SAP HANA transport container. So HANA transport container, we have the delivery unit. This is a top-down approach. When we actually are, you know, creating a CDS views, then later we are creating a, later we are creating a, we are creating a CDS views, later we are, cre we are creating a SAP HANA view to access it. This is what we do. Here we have SAP HANA specific features. We have ABAP managed database procedures. We have better SQL uh, standard uh, support in uh, open SQL extended view definitions. Transparent optimizations, fast data access optimized select for all entries. So you can use select for all entries uh, wherever you want. Table buffer enhancements and new, new SQL parser. These things we are going to do it. So code to data capabilities code to data capabilities in the code to data capabilities what we are doing simple things that we need to remember is amdps we are we are going to work on amdps and what does amdp stand for abap manage database procedures abap manage database procedures now then we have the database oriented programming and how do we use that using using sql 92 uh, rather than the open SQL, so we we'll use a SQL 92. So and then we have the fast data access, optimized select for all entries, which we have for transport optimization, transparent optimizations. So uh, optimizations are very transparent. You don't have to use the aggregations and all. And what do you mean by aggregation? Aggregation is a aggregator is a subset of a, a subset of a, a a table. 